a geological history of the Deschutes River country. The landscapes present in eastern Oregon are undoubtedly impressive, but many who view the dusty high altitude deserts and steep rocky canyon sides feel as though they are too vast and empty to carry with them such an exciting and stimulating path. The Deschutes River is world renowned for its spectacular fishing, stunningly gorgeous scenery, and thrill inducing whitewater rafting. In fact, the small town of Maupin nestled quietly on the Deschutes River with a yearly population of 500 booms with over 2,500 tourists every year enjoying the land on a sunny summer Sunday. The flat, expansive deserts and the seemingly endless rolling hills may seem quiet and peaceful, but they were once home to prehistoric seas, glacial ice, volcanic lava explosions, and tropical beasts such as rhinos, tapirs, and crocodiles. Take a quick journey with me, and let's discover how this beautiful playground arrived in nature. Oregon was born 200 million years ago in the Triassic time period during the Mesozoic era when the piece of the Earth's crust carrying the Pacific Ocean collided with the North American continent, pushing the seafloor into the Earth's core. This monumental collision pushed tons of sediment from the submerged crust upward along the coastline, while volcanoes began to spew molten lava inland. Slowly, Oregon began to form out of the cooling fire and ash. And when I say slowly, I mean slowly. It took 130 million years for the lava and sediment to pile up into what we now know as the Great Northwest. In fact, Oregon is the only state other than Hawaii that was not part of any continent one billion years ago. That is because the landmass was formed of fragmented island arcs similar to modern Japanese islands which collided with the North American continent. As a result, Oregon is a volcanic state, with a greater variety of volcanic rocks than Hawaii. About 70 million years ago when we began to transition into the Cenozoic era and the dinosaurs mysteriously disappeared, Oregon really started growing. Mountains rose and shrank like great pimples, blemishing Oregon's new plains. At first the climate was subtropical, because the Cascade Range didn't exist to impede the warm, moist air flowing from the Pacific Ocean. One especially large volcanic eruption in eastern Oregon laid down huge extensive piles of rock and ash, trapping fossils from all of the wildlife at the time. This included palm trees and avocados, among other tropical plants, as well as rhinoceroses and crocodiles. This layer of ancient volcanic debris is known as the Clarno Formation and currently rests beneath portions of the Deschutes River country, alerting us to the expansive history of the area. Later, saber-toothed tigers, tiny camels, and giant pigs roam the country, only to meet the same fate as their predecessors and become trapped in the volcanic flows. The early ancestors of today's Cascade Range began jutting upwards around 35 million years ago in the Oligocene Epoch during the Tertiary Period and Cenozoic Era. These volcanoes were known as the Western Cascades and formed huge walls 3 to 5,000 feet high. These walls filled with water creating the Inland Sea and covering Eastern Oregon. By the beginning of the Miocene Epoch 25 million years ago, the Western Cascade Range was done growing, but not done interacting with the land. 12 to 17 million years ago, massive floods of molten basaltic lava completely buried central and eastern Oregon. These volcanic flows continued frequently and sporadically, completely annihilating any living force in its path and submerging all but the tallest mountains. Over the years and years of eruptions, more than 50,000 square miles of Oregon territory were covered in cooling lava. The ancient inland sea was filled by liquid basalt and became an immense plateau. For the next 11 million years, new rivers flowing over the basalt plateaus found their way to the Pacific Ocean through the Western Cascades, but this route soon became blocked by the younger, taller mountains of the High Cascade Range. Before it was done growing, the new section of the Cascades rose several thousand feet above its predecessing Western Cascade Range reaching into tens of thousands of feet high. The new Cascade Range began holding back the warm, wet Pacific storms, turning the lush tropical landscapes into cooler, drier deserts. 
The new mountains also formed an impenetrable wall which the rivers had to now route around. The rivers turned north, scouring a course through the volcanic plateau on its way to join the Columbia River, and the Deschutes River was born. Only two million years ago, the world entered its first series of ice ages, depositing snow on top of the Cascade Range and developing younger volcanoes such as Mount Hood, Mount Jefferson, South Sister, and Mount Mazama, which is now known as Crater Lake. During their growth, these volcanoes were covered by massive glacial ice retreating and expanding, spreading as far as 20 miles over a thousand feet thick. This ice gouged the hillsides and canyons, scraping and carving the Deschutes River country along the way. The upper Deschutes River was only geologically founded just over 15,000 years ago and continues to carve a more permanent path through the basalt to this day. This is due to all the volcanic action which filled the river paths with molten rock diverting their course. The lower Deschutes River saw much less volcanic action and has maintained its present course for a much longer period of time. This has allowed that section of the Deschutes to chew through thousands of feet of basaltic rock, creating immensely dramatic canyon walls during the last stretch towards the Columbia. To the amusement of tourists, these walls are also perfect for cliff diving. It is only because of the violent geological past that we can now enjoy the magnificent outdoor recreation of the Deschutes River country in the present. The rolling hills, cascading waterfalls, stunning plateaus, thrilling whitewater rapids, and prosperous wildlife would not exist without the thrashing, destructive, and world-changing molten rock seas which spewed forth from the bowels of the earth. Think about that next time you're fly fishing at dusk.